Hello, and thank you, Nemanja, for this nice introduction. As Nemanja said, I will uh, show you my case study and my PhD, part of my PhD thesis, uh, working on machine learning driven wheat yield prediction uh, with enhanced accuracy using multispectral UAV data. UAV stands for unmanned aerial vehicles or drone technology. Uh, you heard maybe yesterday about uh, wheat yield prediction from our colleagues. So it's not something new, but it's something interesting because uh, still there is still uh, uh, space to improve the accuracy of models. So when I started, I thought first, uh, what should I say before I start and how should I present it to you? And I thought like there is three things that, that I can uh, point out, and one of those is importance for farmers and agribusinesses, important impact on food security economy and environmental benefits. So if we see why is it important for farmers and agriculture, it can optimize resources, it can planning and strategy, strategy and risk management. Uh, for optimizing resources, it's like uh, efficient allocation of uh, fertilizers, water, pesticides, reducing unnecessary costs, uh, in planning a strategy, strategy you, are, you can plan sowing and harvesting schedules. And uh, in risk management, uh, knowing the accepted yield uh, helps farmers better manage risk related to weather changes in market prices, especially in market prices uh, a couple of few, few years back uh, in the COVID times, there was a problem with the prices. Prices skyrocketed and uh, the next year they plummeted down more than double and that was a, a great, uh, uh, it was a, a really uh, bad for, for farmers because the farmers had a problem with, uh, because of the skyrocketed prices, the fertilizer went up and everything else and seed went up and the next year when they wanted to sell their crops they didn't have enough even to, to cover their expenses. So on the food security and economy, food security, economic stability, policy making, stable food supply which is crucial for maintaining global food security also we saw that also uh, during the COVID when we had problems with, uh, for in Serbia, Vojvodina is a province in which uh, mostly agriculture is, is the primary industry. And uh, we had like a state of emergency and didn't, uh, in that period, didn't uh, allow export for farmers. So they had problems because of that. Stabilize food prices in the market. If you know yield in advance, you can stabilize the, the prices which can have positive impact, of course, on the economy, reducing price volatility. That's something that I said earlier. And data on expected yields aids governments and organizations in making informed decisions about subsides, food import and export policies. This is really important because, for example, Italy buys a lot of uh, wheat from Serbia. And uh, because of that, uh, we have we, we need to, to tell them in advance how much can we export to them. If we don't know how much we will export to them, then that can be a problem. And one of the ways can, to solve this can be with uh, prediction with yield. And of course, environmental benefits, sustainable farming practices, climate change adaptation, because using yield predictions helps, helps in, uh, implement sustainable agricultural practices, reducing excessive use of chemicals and improving soil health. If you know that you're, you, you will have maximum yield potential, then you don't need to use uh, like uh, some chemicals is a, is a strong word because don't, you don't use exactly chemicals, but you don't use fertilizers and, and, and uh, you don't need to de degrade on, uh, the field anymore. And also you can combat droughts and floods in some ways. Uh, so what are the challenges? Well, well, as I said at the beginning, the problem is that it's not something, this is not something new, but uh, it's not very accurate. The, in the papers that are published today, uh, there is a lack of accuracy in these, uh, in these uh, prediction models. Why is that? It's because vari variability in climate and soil conditions, as you saw when you came to Novi Sad, it's like 40 degrees, right? And it's not, uh, that's not the normal temperature for Novi Sad in such a high, uh, continuous period of time, you know. And uh, that can be a problem. Also, 
need for precise and e early yield prediction. If you can't predict yield like two months before the harvest, maybe that's not good enough. If you predict it uh, two months, maybe it's, you don't have any more time. Uh, maybe the, the plant has uh, reached its maximum potential and you cannot uh, make it uh, better, you, whatever you do. And of course, traditional methods being labor intensive and less accurate, this is, um, this is meant for uh, traditional methods of uh, yield prediction. Why are they problematic? Because it's more invasive than in the way that we have done. So what's our approach? There is a institute in, uh, in Novi Sad, Institute for Field Crops and Vegetables, and they are uh, a great, uh, great institute, and uh, they do, every year they do a studies on their vari varieties of uh, wheat cultivars, and uh, they have like some type of, of plots, and as you can see, these are 400 plots in, that is meticulously uh, managed. So what did we do? We collaborated with them. We asked them, will they help us? The, will they give us the, the place so we can measure or make uh, our models? And how did we, we do, how did we do it? We used, as I said on earlier, unmanned area vehicles or drones with special uh, high resolution cameras. Uh, we did some math, of course, in the background, and after that we got some some indices or some. Uh, this is a vis visual in, uh, representation of indices that human eye cannot see. And why are they important? They are important because the plants they. Uh, when you see that there is something missing with the plant, when you see that uh, the plant is uh, going bad, like to say it like that then it's already too late because plant in infrared and near infrared uh, spectrum, it's all, it already has the potential to show you her, uh, its stress. So we want to, to uh, like, before it happens to see what is the problem. And we use some machine learning models, 25 uh, machine learning uh, regression models to try and predict uh, uh, with yield prediction, and we got like 97% accuracy, which is which is really really high. Uh, we also sent our paper; it's on review in uh, in a high-ranking paper uh, journal, and they said also that they never saw such a high accuracy. And I have to say, it's it's 100% legit. We didn't middle meddle with the data, so it's true. And what are our results? Our results are that support vector regression and ML power regression performed the best, but you have to bear in mind that even though they did, be, uh, they did uh, perform the best, we also, the models that, because we had 25 models, first five models were really high, a, a little bit uh, less, uh, to say, precise than, than these models. High accuracy in the coefficient of determination of 0.97%, and uh, root mean square error of 250 kilos per hectare. So, plastically to say, uh, in Serbia, wheat is, uh, when it's a bad year, you can get seven tons per hectare. When it's a good year, you get 10 tons per, he per hectare. So, this, these results are, are pretty high, pretty, pretty good. And also, we discovered, discovered, we, we because it's not something new, we just uh, find that it's true, importance of multispectral indices over RGB indices. You will hear a lot of companies already do this, but they use RGB indices. And RGB indices later, in some phases of, of growth, they can't uh, predict yield very accurately. So what are the future directions? And uh, where can we from here go? Well, Adaptation of deep learning models like convolutional neural not networks or long short-term memory would be something that we could, uh, in the future, uh, we could uh, work with. But uh, we, we have to, we need to have a lot more data. Uh, scalability and applicability, of course, expanding the application methodology to other crops. To other crops, it's, it's a bit sketchy. You cannot just like that use a model on wheat that you made for, uh, for corn, because corn biomass doesn't correlate well with yield, for example. And uh, real-time monitoring systems developing real-time, this is something that we have an idea to make like, uh, like a startup, me and my 
colleague and mentor, Zoran Stomenkovic, who sits here, uh, that you will develop real-time monitoring prediction system that integrates U of A data and machine learning models. So for a farmer or a production agribusiness, you just go and take photos, up, upload your photos, and see what will you get, get when the harvest comes. So conclusion. I like all other publications that incorporate soil composition, rainfall temperature, sounds, plant height, biomass, etc. We, we uh, relied exclusively on multispectral data. So we just used the drone. We didn't use any invasive techniques to, to get the, the, the uh, para other parameters. And we, in di that way, achieved 97% accuracy, model accuracy. Uh, also, we believe that multispectral cameras inherently capture the comprehensive state of the plants, encompassing all these factors. So, what we want to say is, when you take uh, when you fo take a photo of a plant in this way, you will uh, encompass all of these rainfall, temperature, sums, plant height, and biomass density. You don't need to go uh, to the field. And this approach not only simplifies the data collection process, but also demonstrates a remarkable potential for multispectral imagery in precise and efficient agricultural yield prediction. And I will just finish with something that my colleague Zoran Stomenko said. I think I thought it was interesting. Uh, this is a rough translation of what he said to me once when we talked about my PhD. He said, plants speak the language of the light, electromagnetic waves. That's something, that's what we meant. And it is up to us to find a way to understand them. Thank you.